Hello and welcome to Rolling With Reviews. I'm Will and with me is my contestant, Sarah. And today we're doing a review of Super Mega Lucky Box. Sarah, tell us a little bit about this game. All right, Super Mega Lucky Box is a flip and write card game with bingo-like mechanisms. Now I suppose we should talk about why we decided to get this in the first place, and that's because we were looking for a new game, weren't we? Uh, we, we had money to spend, <laughs> and we are looking to burn a hole in our pocket. And what better way than to find a game that sounds like a weird Japanese game show? Yeah, I, I, this is one that I did see, but um, the, the name and the box <laughs> doesn't exactly inspire, like, yeah, I'm, I want this game right now. But the good news was I talked to people on Twitter, asked for, you know, game recommendations because we have a lot of games. Um, but we wanted to try something new, something on the lighter end. And this one was recommended. It's by uh, Phil Walker Harding that does Sushi Go. So that's a solid, lighter weight game. And so, yeah, we just, uh, with those uh, recommendations in mind, we bought it. Now, did you ask? people that we were looking for a light filler game? I actually asked for a wide variety of recommendations. Okay. And this was one that filtered in through all of the other games. And I think we bought a larger game and then we were still, still had a little bit of money burning a hole in our pocket. So this fit the bill for a smaller game that costs, well, less. Yes. Which lets, which transitions into what do we like about this game? All right, well, it does what it's supposed to do. It is a quick, fast filler game. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what you can really ask for in this type of light or weight game is that it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah, uh, I like the fact that it is a extremely light social yeah. game. Uh, it fits that niche where I, it doesn't demand a lot from mm. me because it's more or less just flip up a card, mark off a thing, that's, that's the round. Right. And let's just keep doing that till we get to the end of the game. And it has a good structure uh, in terms of it's not going to overstay its welcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it barely stays on the table right. for when you're playing it. So super, super light, super fast. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, you probably want to keep your expectations low. Right. But before we get to what we don't like about the game... Let's continue with a few more things that are good. It plays one to six, so that's really nice for those looking for that higher player count. Plus, in the rules it says if you have two copies, you could play with up to 12. So, I mean, you could really get this going as a, as a party game. And this is one that, were I still going into the office physically, I, and I would be playing this with my coworkers at lunch because this is that perfect lunchtime casual game when you've got a lot of people coming to the table who are still doing other things and talking at the same time. Yeah, and structurally, it's pretty interesting because everyone's on equal footing. And ultimately, you have a grouping of scores that, for the most part, are all around the same because it's almost impossible not for them to be you know, right. together. And so the few choices you make in the game are what creates the outliers of that mm -hmm. core group right. of scores uh, and where you see the dynamics, especially in a bigger player game, when you get to six players, when you get to 12 players, when you get that massive group of people and have those dynamic swings, I can see that being a, a really interesting, fun, goofy type of ex experience. Yeah, because um, like I compare this to Quicks in terms of the roll and write aspect, but with Quicks, you can still get a wide variety of scores because people will make completely different cho uh, choices with the dice. But here, I mean, a card flips up, it is an eight. Everybody has to mark an eight somewhere on their cards if they can. There's not a lot of variance to well, you that. can use a uh, lightning bolt to change that. That's true. That. So every lightning bolt does pip the number up or down and even cycles from nine to one and vice versa. That is true. So you do get some variance, but still for a lot of it. Oh, it does it cycle over. I do not remember at this particular moment. I thought it did. Maybe it doesn't, so don't hold us to that. Because, <laughs> again, we're not here to teach you how to play the game. Like I said, it does not demand a lot from us, yeah. so therefore we are not very mentally focused in on the game. Uh, um, Which, again, is kind of its downside. Yes, but there was one other thing. Um, 
I wanted to say about it. It is pretty light in terms of what you do. There's a number, you're either gonna modify it or not, and you're gonna write it down. Now, when you fill a column or a row, you get a little bonus, and you can use that bonus. Sometimes it's getting tokens, or sometimes it's crossing off another number. And it very rarely you'll get into what I call the combo-rific moments, where you might actually be able to mark off four or five numbers in one turn. That's very rare, but that is a really satisfying feeling. Um, and that I think is where why I like heavier roll and writes a bit more is because I really like that feeling. This will give that to you, but very, very rarely, but it's still something that I really like. Okay. Now, now we can talk about some of the stuff that we don't like about the game. I don't like almost how much randomness there is to it. It's, it is, yeah. it is almost a pastime. Uh, I almost feel superfluous. When it comes to playing, it's not that I don't have a good time mm -hmm. playing it because most of the time when I'm playing it, I'm still socializing. Uh, so it makes that nice backdrop for a social environment where, yeah, we're playing a game, we're doing something, but it's not the most important thing. What's important is the human connection that's going on, which is why I have such a good time with the game. Right. I'm not so heavily mentally uh, focused in the problem is I can see a lot of people wanting the game to demand something from them yeah um, I agree with that for sure it, there is well super mega lucky you are super mega lucky sometimes it feels if you win um, and I think that is one of the downsides and we talk about this especially in our other video with the two-player and the accessibility especially at two players, the moon aspect is really going to be random and that's going to hurt a two-player experience because if one person gets ahead with moons, they're getting the six points and there's really no catching up. And in general speaking, um, that can be an issue for several people. I mean, not just if you're playing two people, is if you draw cards and there's just, there, there's, there's no moon. moon. Yeah. That's no, no moon. moon. No, that's a card. Yeah. Yes, that's right. If there's no moon on it, you never have the opportunity to gain moons. So I know in one of the games we played, and again, this may be just, it felt like in a two-player experience, but you draw cards between rounds and I just wasn't getting any cards that had moons until like, you know, halfway into the game, I finally got one card with a moon on it, but he already had three moons. So I, it was, well, I'll get a moon eventually because when I, I want to fill out the card, which will give me the moon, but I'm not going to seek out and try to fill it fill in that column or row that gives me a moon because like we discussed moons don't give you anything during the game yeah and then also then on an accessibility point we get more deeply into it the icons are also not really great the numbers are fantastic every time there's a number somewhere it's really good and the pieces themselves are good but yeah so we are we ready for the rating? Yes, we All are. Right. When we do a rating, we each have 1d6 worth of rating to give. One is low, six is high. We give our number and a reason why. Then we add them together and see what it rolls for us. Sarah, what did Super Mega Lucky Box roll for you? It rolled a three for me. And that's because we are currently at the point where we're playing it two players. If I could take this to work and play with my coworkers, I think they would have a blast with it. I think I would have a blast with it. I think my rating would be higher. But as it stands with just me and Will, it's a, I don't mean to put it this way, but it's a bit of a chore for me to do because I have to handle all the cards. And if I've got three or four cards in front of me, Will's got three or four cards in front of him, I have to look at what I'm doing, cross off things. Then I have to look at all his cards, read them to him, cross off what he wants me to do. And so for the weight of this game and the return of enjoyment from this game, that's asking a bit much. Now, are we never going to play this? No, we're keeping this because I think this is going to be a great game at higher player counts when we have people over again, whenever that happens. So... It's, it, it's still a game I will I believe I will enjoy because I do like the mechanisms. But as it stands right now with how we're typically going to play it, it's about middle of the road for me. For me, I'm going to give it a two. Mm. Uh, the reason being, uh, it's not the fact that I didn't like playing the game. It's just I can easily see myself getting burned out from it uh, because, again, there's not too much in the way of meat 
in a experience right. in there. Uh, again, most of our experience has come with just playing two players. Mm -hmm. But even with multiplayer, I would say you're going to need to keep your expectations low to get the most out of this game. And I want to prepare people for that. <laughs> so I want them to expect a two and maybe get a three or four experience out of this game. Mm -hmm. um, because if I rate it any higher, people would have gotten it to the table and go, I, I, don't, I don't see it because I was expecting more. Uh, so two, I think, puts people in the right mindset of where they can probably get the best out of this game. I like the game. It has a purpose in our collection and it's gonna stay in our collection. So it's weird that I'm giving it such a low rating. But, I mean, you've given games that we're keeping that, yeah. uh, I mean, I like it still too. It's fine. So between the two of us, it rolled a 5 out of 12. Not the greatest, but right. then again, it's a filler game. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think uh, at a certain point you can ask a filler game to go really high and not a not a lightweight filler game there's not a lot of variance in what you do in this game and so um, there's not much challenge to it and again like we've said it's a social game and if you're enjoying yourself at the table with other people playing this game then that's exactly what this thing is supposed to do and i think we just haven't had the opportunity to really experience that yet yes for all intents and purposes, we could play with a massive amount of people and have a six experience. Right. For all I know. But that's what we have. So that'll do it for us. Uh, you can, if you have any questions or want to reach out, you can do that on any of the social media platforms at Rolling with Two. That's T W O. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Of course, check us out on YouTube. Like and subscribe, please. And I've been Will. And I've been Sarah. And we've been Rolling, Rolling with, with Reviews. reviews.